Welcome to the show, guys. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the Super Bowl recap. Rams versus the Bengals and how the fix was definitely in. I definitely have a clip here for you. You have to check out. I had Brian Tui on the show. The author of The Fix is in. Great book explaining how sports gaming is fixed. This video I launched about two months ago. I had him on the show organically got over 114,000 views, a lot of interest around the fixing of games, and a lot of people are starting to wake up to this. And in this video, we actually explain, or Brian does for that matter, explains how the Rams were primed to win the Super Bowl this year. This is absolutely amazing. You have to check this out. This is phenomenal. So I'm going to roll the clip here. It's about two minutes, two and a half minutes. I go on about Odell Beckham Jr. and how he is super marketable. And he goes on in regards to why he thinks the Rams are going to win in regards to SoFi Stadium. And he has his explanation. But what's remarkable about this is this was before the Rams made the playoffs. This was back in November. This was mid-November. So this was very early prior to the Rams winning the Super Bowl. So you have to listen to this, watch this clip, and in the comments below, let me know what you guys think. Because if you watched the game yesterday, I mean, that one last, you know, they had the, the Rams were driving, and there was a ball thrown, I think it was to Cooper Cup, and it was called a holding call, but it wasn't a holding call, and that put them at first and goal and put the Rams in position to take the lead for that game. So I think the Bengals would have won this game. I mean, they had them. They would have probably kicked the field goal and been a down one, right? The Rams would have kicked the field goal because it was like third down and change. And it's like, okay, now they're they're in position at first and goal because of that terrible call, the pass interference holding call, which I don't think was a pass interference holding call. So you got to listen to this, watch this video, how we kind of called it on the show. Brian more or less called it. I kind of hinted at it. But you're going to watch this video and you're going to see, oh, my God, this is kind of obvious and kind of proves my point that it was actually uh, fixed. So check this out, guys. Again, Los Angeles, huge stadium they paid for back in September 2020. Huge market, right? The Rams, LA, celebrities, big deal, very brandable. And part of me was thinking, okay, maybe Joe Burrow's going to win this thing. You know, Joe Burrow, Burrow, building Burrow. But they've built Burrow enough. He got to the Super Bowl. And I, I just was hoping I was wrong. That's why I was like, I got to go building Burrow to prove this theory wrong. But anyway, watch this clip. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll talk after this clip is uh, played here. So listen to how I talk about Odell and how he gets into how this thing is fixed. This is, fixed. This is astonishing. Check this out. Well, sticking on the player thing, let's use Odell Beckham Jr., for example. The guy sucks. He's not a good player. I don't care what anyone says. He's a trash player. He's a slightly above par, if best. Wide he had one good catch, though. One good catch, and he hasn't literally I, – I looked at his average. He's averaged three touchdowns per season. He's only finished two seasons, full seasons his entire career. They pump him and pump him and pump him. He's a marketable guy. They pump him and pump him. Like, for example, I'll give you an example. Yesterday there was a game. He's on the Rams. Debo Samuel, who I had on my show, better player – you know, no talk about him in the media, just about Odell being on the Rams. He had like two catches the whole game. And I know he didn't get a lot of play time. He's got to learn the playbook, yada, yada. But he's not good. Yet the NFL keeps pumping this guy. They love him. They're on his junk. Why is that? Is it just because he's a marketable guy? I think it's because he was built up and it's like they're saving face or something. Like, it's almost kind of like, it's weird, man. Like, let this guy go. You know, it's a market. I don't get it. Yeah, well, they do that. I mean, look at, I think Matt Stafford's another guy. I mean, they could care less about Matt Stafford, the media yeah. in the NFL, when he was on the Lions. But suddenly now he's on the Rams, and he's the savior of the Rams, right? Yeah. I mean, he's just, they're like, oh, my God, this guy's been an incredible quarterback for 15 years. Nobody cared about him. Nobody ever said he was an incredible quarterback. He was no. a Lions quarterback. He was good, but he wasn't yeah. incredible. But then all of a sudden this season, they started hyping him up like he's the second coming, which makes me think that the Rams are going to go somewhere this season in the playoffs, regardless of what they've done the past couple of games. Yeah. Because, like you see, now they got Beckham there. They got Von Miller, who's really at the end of his career. He hasn't done too much for the you know, Broncos since he won the Super Bowl with Peyton Manning. Um, so, you know, it's like they've built a super team that's in the super stadium where the owner spent $5 billion to build it. And despite the fact that he's in a lawsuit with the city of, you know, St. Louis over relocation, yeah it seems like they're pumping the Rams up for something this season because the Super Bowl is going to be held in L.A. again this year, too. And so maybe they'll have back-to-back home Super Bowls. I don't know. But it just seems odd. Like, you see, certain guys get pushed in ways that don't make sense sometimes. Yeah, you bring Odell there. You got some stardom. You got some popularity. They bring in Miller now, Vaughn Miller. They're, it's yeah. like they're building it up. And then going on to that, sticking with that, it's like super teams, like LeBron, right? Like. 
All right, so there you have it, guys. We talked about this. This is, again, back in November of 2021. We talked about this. So I implore you guys. I mean, so so it's fixed. What you know? What's the point of this, Joe? What, where, what are you trying to get at? I'm trying to say that it's all about you got to follow the dollar. You got to follow the market. You got to follow the storylines. And, you know, so many people are just so caught up in like, oh, it's not, it's not. I mean, there has to be. There has to be something there has to be a hand that plays into the storyline right we thought about this in wwe back in the day we were like oh no you know wrestling is real blah blah back in the 80s right early 90s and then we figured out that it was a show and i'm not saying all of this is a show but i think a good portion of it is a show and a big portion of it is probably fixed so if you guys have not checked out this episode i implore you guys click on the link watch the whole episode here with brian tui if you are new to the channel make sure you guys do subscribe because i will be talking about nfl we'll be talking about everything about sports mma here and of course fantasy football is what i focus on here but again in regards to recapping uh yesterday's game i mean i really think the Bengals had that game i really do i think it was like what 2016 and again, it was third and what is it? Third and long or whatever it was, third and change. And then they had that holding call. I mean, they wouldn't they wouldn't have converted that third down. It would have been fourth down. They had to either kick a field goal or go on in a fourth down. Or was it fourth down? Either way, point of the matter is they converted that first down. And at the end of the day, it just seemed obvious that the Rams were going to win that game because everything was set up. It was too. It was a Cinderella story. It was perfect. The celebrities were there. The stars were aligning. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. The Rams won it. Congrats to them. Uh, but, again, like I said, Stafford wasn't important prior to being on the Rams. Odell, they conveniently put him on the Rams knowing this team was going to make it. He's a marketable guy, right? All part of a great storyline, Cooper Cup. I mean, he's had this amazing year, right, amazing season. He's, he's doing really well. It's all great story. And I heard Van Jefferson actually ended up having a baby just after the game. He had four receptions in the game, and then he ended up having a baby. All great storylines, more headlines, everything. I'm not, I mean, the baby had nothing to do with the fix. But what I'm trying to say is, like, it just it was just a great story all around. A feel-good story. Keep the ratings up. Keep the advertisers in. And that's exactly what happened. So Rams got their fix this year. They were primed to win, and uh, that's how it worked out. So, again, if you haven't checked it out, guys, check it out. Brian Tui here. Check out the show here. And if, you, if you're on new to the channel, make sure you guys do click that subscribe button. I do talk about other stuff other than fantasy football. And let me know below. Let me know about your comments. Was that a holding call at the end? I think the fix was definitely in. Love to get your feedback. All right, guys? Thanks for being here. Super Bowl is now done. we got to go, what, like six months now or something like that without football, which is crazy because I, I really enjoy watching football. So it's a little bit of a time off right now, but it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, we just got to watch other things. All right? UFC is one thing that kind of gets me through uh, the offseason a little bit. All right, guys, thanks for being here. Subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I'm out.